super dramatic, almost as dramatic as your intro just uh, starting the broadcast. I, for one, am feeling truly buzzed for this uh, fourth round of the Model E World Championship. We're coming towards the halfway point of not just the, uh, the season, but uh, this championship as well. This will be the fourth round of 2023. We've had three drama packed rounds so far, and Aston, if last year was anything to go by that, should be exactly the same. Quite right, so long as the rain stays away, of course, that will be one of the main things, because uh, those of you who were with us last year remember that uh, fiasco of uh, stop and start weather, etc. to get here in Aston, but I can tell you, assuredly, it's very, very sunny here, rather hot and humid, regretting wearing an undertop, even here in our air-conditioned commentary box. There is Ferrari then, second on the grid he lines up today, much better than where he qualified back in Germany, which really dogged down his chances of race victories. He uh, finished race two in the end, of course, down in seventh place, but it was much better the previous race in race one. At lunchtime, he was fourth, and there is Granado, bumped up from row two up to row one now, Neil. Yep, absolutely qualified fourth, but finds himself on the inside of the front row. Eric was sensational here at Aston a year ago, finishing second in race one, and then he won race two. And there is confirmation at the bottom of your screens that Matia Cassaday's fastest lap time in Q2 was cancelled because of a tyre pressure that was under the limit. Of course, the story yesterday with Cassaday was that he came through Q1 after uh, being outside of the top 10 riders in the free practice combined sessions. He set the, well, the second fastest time in Q1, but really built on that for Q2, setting a 140.5. Torres was actually over two tenths back. It was a blistering lap, but of course, low tyre pressures, he was out of it. Krumanaka, there on your screens, the number three, the Swiss rider, up into heading row two. He will start for fourth place today. Well, indeed, Krumanaka felt that he found something, made a step in the right direction at the Saxon ring, and it certainly bore out in his results. Second place in race one, and he was uh, right in the middle of that fight uh, before the race was prematurely curtailed in race two. Kumanaka comes here fourth in the championship, 29 points back of uh, Jordi Torres, and good to see this man a bit more like his Mugello self here at Aston, man. Yeah, I was starting to get a bit worried that he was a Mugello specialist and nothing more, unfortunately, with Mantovani, but he has certainly proved us wrong. Fifth place he was. On, he is on the grid here today for both races. Great to see him back. Just the coolest hairstyle in Moto E. Kin to his fellow Italian, Marco Pazzecchi. There's Alessandro Zaccone. He is on the outside of that second row, bumped up from row three, of course. Great to see him. Another rider improving as he continues to adapt to the new Ducati Moto E machines. Absolutely. We still haven't seen the best of Zaccone this year, you feel, but uh, once it does click completely, it'll definitely be a challenge for Williams once again. Let's see if the car goes off, takes off on its lap around this TT circuit. As in glorious conditions, as you could just see. I mean, you couldn't really ask for better conditions here, Matt. No, certainly not. There's Mikel Pons then. He heads the third row of the grid, seventh spot. He gets a good luck. Another rider along with Zaccone, who's finally making those improvements and adapting cleanly to that Ducati Moto E machine. Great to see because he was one of the top riders in Moto E the last year or so. He's of course taking a race victory previously in Barcelona. So Tom's come up with here today. I think, Neil, if there's anything we can guarantee here in Assen, there is going to be some drama. That final section, just iconic. The Gert Timmer chicane just in fights, lunges, and of course, with Moto E being sprint races as well, super sprint in comparison to the Moto GP sprint, absolutely sensational. This is your front row then, so we have Granado on the outside, Ferrari in second place, and now Jordi Torres in pole position. More drama awaits here, we have a real crunch time in the championship, every single point matters, the wins are on the line, what awaits here in Moto E? There is Jordi Torres. Let's find out. Let's see.
final rundown of the grid then. The three minute board is up as we go racing at 12.15 local time. Torres, pole position, Ferrari second, Granado third. The last rider to take wins here. Two victories for Granado in the TT circuit. Aston won pole position previously, fastest laps in all three races. Then behind him uh, on that third, is we have the second row of the grid, we have Krumanaka, Mantovani and Ciccone. Third row is Pont, Zanoni and Rabat. Some of the best performances we've seen from Kevin and Tito there. Behind them, of course, now we have Casadei and uh, we have his teammate Spinelli and Hector Garzo there. Uh, a lacklustre qualifying session from Hector. Hikaria Kubo is on the the fifth row of the grid, I should say, with, alongside the flying moustache of Kevin Manfredi, Lucas Salvadori on the outside, Alessio Finello, 16th, Romika Perez and Maria Herrera. Time for things to get serious, uh, adrenaline pumping, coursing through the veins of our competitors on the grid there then. No warm-up lap, of course, it is straight up go, go, go for Moto E. The time has come, Neil. Prediction time, please. It is tough to look past the uh, top two guys on the grid. Jordi Torres, Matteo Ferrari, they were the two standout names in practice. And, uh, well, two standout names in qualifying. But uh, quite fancy Randy Krumnak, actually coming through from the second row of the grid. So, uh, for number four, the Swiss rider. In fact, the number three, I should say, coming from fourth on the grid. We also have to mention this man, Hector Garzo. We had a pretty disappointing qualifying yesterday. He's down in 12th in the fourth row. That was criminal, no apologies. <laughs> His teammate, Hector Garzo, is starting a bit further back. You want we'll to have a look at the fourth row as the race gets underway. Yeah, Hector, uh, he didn't have a, such a great qualifying. He seems to have struggled a little bit here in Aston, uh, but never mind that. Plenty of overtaking opportunities, very different affair than with the Saxon race, sort of sweeping, left-handers, similar, almost one line, whereas here, just so many different overtaking spots. And I'm so glad, Neil, it's always a great crowd here in Aston, isn't it? The Dutch fans love their motorcycle racing and where it is, it's per very closely to the UK. And then you've also got other countries nearby, Belgium, and then we're not too far from Germany as well. Plenty of fans coming from all over, and now to watch some of the best electric motorcycle racing action they'll see anywhere in the world. Moto E almost ready to go here at Assen. A little bit more stretchy time for Jordi Torres who made a cracking practice start at the end of qualifying yesterday we saw. Will he be able to translate that here into the race as well? The red flag departs from the front of the grid. We await the lights still go out and we'll burst into life for round four in Assen. Race one of Moto E. The lights are on and the ball could be away from everybody. But who will get the home shot in towards turn one? A lightning star for Torres, but he's already got a Ferrari alongside him. Who will be the last of the red flag? It's Torres with a sweeping line. With Ferrari just behind him and Kulaka. Oh, is that Zanoni? I think it could be. Zanoni up in the fourth place ahead of Kulaka. movements going into first place as Ferrari looks as though he's gained the advantage. Yes, he has. He didn't even leave any room for Torres to fight back. But what about, for, uh, that was Garzo, pushed right down the 13th thing off the start as well. But it's the back straight time now. Slipstream City and ultra fast right hand coming up. Absolutely, yeah, this is so super fast stuff into turn six at the end of the beach slide, the back straight, very easy to get just up ahead, it's Krumenacker in third. Cassidy has gained three positions from his grid spot. Spinelli hasn't managed to make decent progress, but Cassidy won't be keeping an eye on. Absolutely, there's Krumenacker then. Third place for him, and this is a prime overtaking spot as well. All around here, if you can switch the lines up, look at that, the freight train of Moto E in full flow. Now we start to wind it up as Thomas moves through into the lead, but for how long? Side by side with Ferrari. Ferrari not giving him an inch. Look at that. As wide as he like now through one of the fastest corners on the calendar. Look at that sideways through there. It's all about the rounds from calendar to the game for the start. Is and Cassidy's managed to pick off another rider. Matt Devani, he's been four positions there. And this is that fantastic side of the He's right there with this lead group. And we've got Ferrari then into the GT chicane, leading for the first time. Out we come then. Torres follows from Krumanaka and Granada. Then it's 21 of Zanoni just off the back. Cassidy has moved up a few positions then. Here we go, lap two as Torres gets squirrely under the brakes. 
disappointed Hector Garza hasn't made any of the progress that I envisioned in the first lap. You can see he's remained in 12th place from 12th on the grid. Not great stuff from the championship defender. Mikel Tons is also going to push right back to second place on the starting grid. He now sits 10th place. Oh, Ronaldo. Ronaldo levers Kermanaka out of the way there. Supreme corner speed and line choice from the Brazilian there. Now the chase is on. He is the only rider on the grid to have won races at the TT circuit as of prior to this year. He does not want to get that title again, get away, but it's Krimanaka fights straight back on the Brazilian. That was for the like as well and you can see that that uh, squabbling between third and fourth position has given the, the top two just a little bit the battle between Kumanaka and Granada holding that little duet up. Look at that though, Sononi and Cassidy up three and four places apiece. They're right in the back of Granada and Kumanaka now. They've got Mantovani for company two as we come down the ramp. Cassidate through into fifth position. Good stuff in this time again. Easily done at that part. You are trying to eat it right out to the edge of the curve to square off the line. Take it directly as possible as Mantovani moves up the inside of Zanoni. But how long? Not very. Yeah, not very long indeed. Oh, and it looks as though Mantovani's going to come back in. Beautiful racing. That is as close as you like. And it's now invited for a back through as well. Goodness me. And only getting completely beaten up and back at the front man. Fastest lap from the second man on track, Jody Torres at 140.281. That's half a second faster than his pole position lap time from yesterday. A new lap record obliterating the best time from yesterday. Cinematic view there as we got track limits warning for the likes of Granada and Cassaday. How's that now? Cassaday moves up then into fourth position. Granada not having the race that he would have liked here at Hampton. Not showing his previous dominant form here. Lap times. The only rider who's also able to do that is in fact today then with that personal best lap from last time around. That's still faster than the pole position time yesterday. It's Mantovani now pushing Granado back, but not for long as he just nerves him out of the way too. Goodness me. Oh, Mantovani just hangs it out wide as well to cut the inside line there into turn seven. Oh, that was stunning stuff from the Italian. Granado properly getting beaten up there then by two Italians apiece, but he's fighting straight back. Look at this. Spread out here, Ferrari has just started to make a break on Torres. We didn't really envision this. We thought these two guys were going to maybe remain together. Don't know if Torres has made a slight mistake off camera, but Ferrari now looks as though he's got what three tenths of a second behind. Yeah, it looks so. It looks as though we might be able to see now what happened. Is this the this is the start of the race then with uh, Torres and Ferrari fighting tooth and nail for first position coming around the Strubin? 
you could do that nice shot. Yeah, we might well have to start hunting on Randy Kriminacker as a bit of a challenger because he's just managing to uh, catch these guys ever so slightly. It was 1.1 seconds between Torres and Kriminacker at one point a lap ago. He's managed to get that done by two tenths of a second. He needs to continue that progress up front. We're now out of the 140 zone in your average lap times for the chasers then, 141s for Cassaday and Granado, while Ferrari said a 140.5. That would have put him pole position yesterday still. That's the kind of pace we're running here. Torres, yes, two tenths back that last time around, and seemingly so, that gap is increasing as well. Four tenths over the line, six tenths into sector two. What about into sector three then? You can see it on your screens there. Yeah, this is stunning stuff from the tail Ferrari. He isn't quite matching Jordi Torres' lap record that he set earlier in this race, but still well under the qualifying times from yesterday, which was at a 1.47 Jordi Torres' pole position time. So this is really impressive stuff from Matteo Ferrari. Track time in ideal conditions like this throughout the weekend. You see fantastic curb shots through moving near onto that back straight. And you have to say, Ferrari looks as though he's making a definitive break. Yeah, he really is. This is so impressive for Ferrari. He's certainly found the groove, hasn't he? So it could be down to a duel between Kromanaka and Torres for that second spot there. And as Torres runs it nearly quite wide on the SCG. Kruminacker has taken another tenth of a second out of Jody Torres there in third and well, uh, Granado and Mantovani have properly rallied to get back with Cassidy in that fight for fourth. Mantovani underneath the Brazilian with the knee, overtaking move into turn one. Good stuff this from your time. Yeah, this is really up the side of the gentleman. I think the corner speed that Eric's able to carry is raining things around the outside. Not enough there. A few too many more meters covered by the 51 here through the back corner in particular. Now onto the back straight, we come once again, hopping into the slipstream, tapping in, squeezing every single muscle you can, be as aero as physically possible down the back straight. They are 146, 49 miles an hour down the back straight for Moto E this year. Yeah, super stuff. You see Jordi Torres right on the edge of the track there, exiting turn seven, full commitment from the Spaniard and the championship leader. He's trying everything he can to keep uh, Matteo Ferrari within reach, but he's not having much success with it because Ferrari's lead line mate is just under one full second. You feel that only mistake can stop him from here. Exactly that, and Torres has got to think of the championship. It's far better at this point in part of the game to take the 20 points rather than risk it for those extra five and coming away with potentially zero. So Torres now just needs to fight with all his might for that second spot. You see Grimanac is still on his tail. We've also got Mantovani coming through. He is the fastest rider on track at the moment. A 140.7 last time around to Ferrari's 40.9. Can he take fellow Italian Cassidy on this next final lap? Grimanac is coming up and sees really slashed that gap to Jordi Torres just ahead of was 0.9 of a second a lap ago, it's down to 0.4, so the battle for second certainly is not Certainly not then, last lap time, just a few kilometers to go in race one of Moto E. Cassidy versus Pantadani for that fourth position just off the podium. So we want any shot at silverware here. This last time we have to rely on a mistake from somebody else at the head as we see different line choices for coming up here. Jordi Torres there. Down the back straight they come. Will Mantovani pull off any heroics like we saw a few laps ago? Tucking in the slipstream. His gigantic Italian hairy frame all over the back of Cassaday then. But Ferrari looks superior out front at the moment. Certainly does. Randy Krumenak is the only rider in this Model E class that was in the one minute 40s last time around as he continues just to edge towards Jordi Torres. Three tenths of a second now he is behind. I feel he might just well be close enough when they come through the ramp to launch an attack later on. You can see Granado's been left behind in sixth. It's now a two way fight for fourth between Cassidy and Mantovani. Yeah, absolutely agree, Neil, then. So we come through this double right-hander and prop to start winding up the speed through Maven Mir and then into Holger Heider and Ramshook. It's final sector time. This looks like it's Ferraris to lose, but will there be a change of second place? I think the gap for Torres is too big for Krumenaka to overcome. But what about Mantovani? Will he have something for Cassidy there to take fourth off him into the final again? He moves on the inside! so close but that will be not enough close but no cigar Ferrari wins it from Torres in second Kramanaka third Cassidy holds on to fourth place ahead of Mantovani Granado home fifth
That's a salvage job in the background there for Garzo. He comes across the line in seventh. Look like an almighty Titanic set on my scrap for seventh place there. One by Hector Garzo, who eventually managed to do a decent job coming through from 12th on the grid. Started very slowly, but managed to make decent progress. But he can now be in the front of the <laughs> Ferrari. He controlled that brilliantly. And uh, well, a faultless ride for his second world the year. Silverstone, that round that makes it a world championship this year, eight rounds covered. Of course, we have one more race later here today. It'll be a double for number 11. Comes away from race one with those 20. Yep, Jordi Torres and the Aspar team, they'll have a, I was going to say so so that's maybe a bit intense to say, but uh, a few things to try and understand and work out just where they could get back to Matteo Ferrari in that race. Torres certainly had the one lap speed at the start, setting a new lap record for Moto E at this uh, TT circuit Assen, but just didn't have the ability to go with the Italian as the laps wore on. That's the beauty of Moto E racing this year, always will be a second chance at the end of the day, we want to stick around because we have obviously Model 3, Model 2 qualifying coming up, and then a Model GP sprint and Model E race too. It really is a jam packed Super Saturday here in the Netherlands. We just didn't really have anything for the Italian there, man. Yeah, I would say exactly. It's like that when uh, Ferrari just pulled out, um, you know, just kept up the lap record pace, you know, just a, a, that extra lap. But he tapped that near half second gap. I think Torres probably thought then, actually, I really want that world championship. This will be uh, down the pit. I'm going to play the consistency part. Yeah, absolutely. We know that Jordi certainly knows how to build a championship together. He's done it twice in this class before. Great ride as well by Randy Kubinicki. In third, it looked at one point as though he would be dropped by Eric Granada, but he responded immediately and then uh, set about chasing down Jordi Torres in the second half. There is didn't quite have enough for the Spaniard, but another podium finish for the Swiss. His third podium in his rookie campaign. He continues that good consistent run. He's never finished outside the top seven and he's finished each race this year, so that's pretty good consistency for a rookie. That is a very experienced rookie, isn't it, in Randy Kubinaki as well, a former Super Sport World Champion, harnessing all that experience and knowledge there to bring out his very best in his rookie year in Moto E. Speaking of experience, there is the original World Cup winner in Ferrari, another race victory for him, and the fellow Rossini Moto E squad. Prior to this year, Matteo Ferrari had never won a Moto E race outside Italy. He won seven for the North either at Mugello or at Misano. But uh, this year, he's managed to win in both France and now in the Netherlands as well. Jordi Torres doesn't look too upset, does he, man? Looks like he's going to speak with Jake Dixon. Big session for Dixon coming up this afternoon. He's been the talk of the town in Moto 2 so far this weekend. Absolutely the man to beat. Jordi Torres just didn't have enough at the end. Six tenths of an advantage. Ferrari had at the flag. But uh, Torres certainly looked as though he's content and will be happy to have another goal later this afternoon. Well then, that was a, a cracking race. A uh, Not the blockbuster finish we have uh, come to know and love here at TT Circuit Asset, but certainly very interesting in regard to the championship as well. Here is Vanny Krimanaka though, third place here this lunchtime. What does he make of it, Frank? Well, Randy, another podium and some really, really impressive speed in race one. Congratulations, and what have you got for us later on today? Yeah, thank you. Uh, it was it was a tough race. Uh, at the beginning, I lost some some uh, time with uh, Eric. He was he's a hard fighter and hard on brakes and and and. I, I got some gap uh, on, on Jordi and uh, Matteo. Uh, they were pushing so hard, me too, but I, I couldn't uh, catch them again. Uh, last lap a little bit, but not enough. They did a great race, and I think we can be really happy with third. 
and let's just try to do a small step for race two and maybe catch them. Best of luck, Randy. Thank you. Great stuff for Randy, a cracking uh, analysis of his race uh, there as well. Um, so good for him then at the third place and starting to rack up those podiums, isn't he? Excellent stuff for Randy. And that was his move over on Granado to take that one. Jordi Torres keeping his eye on somebody there. Second place for the fine pork chops today. What does he make of it, Fran? So, Jordi, second place, very close. Not quite able to just get Mateo at the end of the race. Talk us through that. Did you decide to maybe take those 20 points given your position in the championship? And what have you got in race two? Yeah, you can see on the TV that Mateo is pushing really, really hard. Uh, our rhythm mode, the, the rhythm that he pushes is very, very high. We try to do everything, but sometimes when I feel that uh, some movements on the, on the tires, okay, Jordi. You must be relaxed, thinking about your position, finish the race, take some points, and we'll see what happens for the future. But uh, yes, I don't catch anything about uh, Matteo Ferrari, but uh, yes, we still continue forward on the championship. We still continue focus in, in our objective, that is uh, collect the many personal as possible in every race. And uh, yes, we are in the good way. You are indeed. Thanks and congrats. Thank you. Consistency is key. There he is then. Torres takes the place in number 81. And does not extend his series lead. He has 124 points now to Matteo Ferrari's. The number 11 has 111 points. How about that? How does he feel about that victory, though? A sensational race from him. How did he do it, Fran? Well, Matteo, that was some speed. Again, we saw you just. No one could quite keep up with you. No one could quite get close enough to make a move. Congratulations. And what have you got for race two? Same again. Really happy about this race. I started really, really fast. Uh, I overtake in the third corner, Jordi, because uh, I want to start in the front. Uh, I push uh, from the first lap, from the first corner. Uh, for sure, it was difficult because uh, in the middle of the race, I felt a little bit of drop in the front. But the bike worked uh, really well, so I managed it. Uh, in the second part, we were very fast. Uh, now we have to, to analyze something to, to improve for race two. But uh, yeah, this is the strategy also for race two. Well, improve for race two. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. Ciao. Classic race, all right? Oh, yeah, great race. But now we're going to go and analyze something and improve for race two. Never stops, doesn't this game? Anyway, that makes the championship, though. Not sitting on your laurels. There he is then crossing the line to take that victory then. Ferrari, the number 11, takes another victory this season. So, cracking job from him. And, of course, we have race two coming up later on this afternoon as well. Ferrari's first victory, of course, it's the second race back in the Mont. Since then, he's had a second place and two-thirds. And then... Germany race two. I'm much more pleased with that. That's more like it. And of course, after that big mistake at the first race of the season in Le Mans, where he decks it out of I don't know what it was, two. certainly the leading Hello. position. Hello. 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 I don't know, is it? Well, there we go. He signs the NLX charger. I like the thought of them like ferrying off these charges around the world and sort of there's now like dotted signed charges by Moto E riders everywhere. Maybe there'll be some near Vista Village where I live at some point. You go and buy a new pair of new battle shoes and oh look! It's Mateo's one. Charging some Here is then the podium. Motul TT Asin where they all wanna stand, but none of the drinking of the Prosecco. This lunchtime, another race to go later today. For that one, they can get the sweet taste of victory if they like. I've not even going up there yet. Come on, guys. Mush! Um, because there's qualifying ahead as well, of course. So, the state of play for the rest of the year, then, we have how many more races to go? Second one here, then three, four more rounds, I should say. Silverstone, Austria, Barcelona and Misano. 
bet that it will all go down to the wire as well, especially if the Ferrari's on this fight back. As far Congrats. As the, the Enhorabuena, tú también estás aquí. Gracias, buen resultado. Found a, another name thrown into the mix in the form of Krumanaka. It's been a part of uh, Moto 2 or Moto 3, etc. Now, potential to be world champions in a different class altogether as we see coming up the command of the podium. There is Torres then out to the podium for him. Nice to, there's a bit, load of uh, camaraderie between the riders as well here. Of course, they're all fierce rivals, but they're all very friendly with each other. So much respect. It's very, very nice indeed to see. And the paddock got their own little area as well. There is Krumanaka receiving his trophy. Second place one goes to Jordi Torres. They're not different colours, are they? They're all just silver. Or is there a bronze, silver and gold part? I'm not sure. But either way, here is the P11 going to Matteo Ferrari. Excellent start. Very, very sweet one, that. Time for the national anthem of Italy. Italian national anthem. Excellent start. Now to get everybody's leathers completely soaked to Prosecco. Hopefully it still weighs them down in race two to a deep out a bit of an advantage down the straight or something like that. There we go then. Torres and Ferrari and Krumanaka then. Cheers everybody. Whee! Race two later on. Um, a little swig for good luck for Ferrari. Yes, please do not forget now race two coming up this afternoon after the MotoGP sprint and 